Hello, Mrs. Elms here. Happy World Book Day, everybody. Um, now, when I was first asked to choose a book for reading to you today, uh, my mind started whirring and I thought that I would never be able to choose. And then having a little look at my bookshelf, one book absolutely popped off for me as being the ultimate choice. Now, it's going to seem a bit of an unusual one, perhaps, um, considering I'm an English teacher and I've read quite so many. Um, but this is the book that I, when I think about what started my love of reading, what book I would like to read again and again and again, this is the one that has come to mind. I've recently read it again to my children um, and was reminded just how wonderful it was. Um, and that book, and I'm on my third copy of it, um, <laughs> because the others have been read so much, is Matilda by Roald Dahl. Often dismissed as a, as a children's book, Roald Dahl's work um, far surpasses anything that could be considered simply a children's book. There's so many hidden meanings and things to think about much further than just the obvious storyline that's happening. And I admire Matilda above and beyond most heroines that you're shown in novels um, because of her tenacity and her determination. Um, for anyone who hasn't read the book, I'm going to read you a section from very early on um, so as not to spoil it too much. Um, but Matilda is basically a four-year-old who di discovers an incredible love and consumption of books. She's an incredibly intelligent little girl, perhaps a little precocious, if we're honest. Um, but she's only four, we'll forgive her. Um, and she doesn't really get on with her family. She uses books as an escapism because she doesn't get on with her family. Um, and she decides very early on in the novel that she will exact her revenge on her family by using her sort of cunning ways and her mischievous side. And one of the, um, one of my favourite chapters, which is the one I'm going to read you, is the one where she exacts revenge on her father, Mr. Wormwood. Um, and this is because he accuses her of being a cheat, um, which she really, really hates. So this section is, uh, th this chapter is called The Hat and the Superglue. The following morning, just before the father left for the beastly second-hand garage, Matilda slipped into the cloakroom and got hold of the hat that he wore each day to work. She had to stand on her toes and reach as high as she could with a walking stick in order to hook the hat off the peg. And even then, she only just made it. The hat itself was one of those flat-topped pork pie jobs with a jay's feather stuck in the hat band, and Mr Wormwood was very proud of it. He thought it gave him a rakish, daring look, especially when he wore it at an angle with his loud check jacket and green tie. Matilda, holding the hat in one hand and a thin tube of superglue in the other, proceeded to squeeze a line of glue very neatly all around the inside rim of the hat. Then she carefully hooked the hat back onto the peg with a walking stick. She timed this operation very carefully, applying the glue just as her father was getting up from the breakfast table. Mr. Wormwood didn't notice anything when he put his hat on, but when he arrived at the garage, he couldn't get it off. Superglue is very powerful stuff, so powerful it will take your skin off if you pull too hard. Mr. Wormwood didn't really want to be scalped, so he had to keep the hat on, on his head the whole day long, even when putting sawdust in the gearboxes and fiddling the mileage of cars with the electric drill. In an effort to save face, he adopted a casual attitude, hoping that his staff would think that he actually meant to keep his hat on all day long just for the heck of it, just like gangsters do in the films. When he got home that evening, he still couldn't get his hat off. Don't be silly, his wife said. Come here, I'll take it off for you. It's a fabulous illustration. They're trying to pull it off. She gave the hat a sharp yank. Mr. Wormwood let out a yell that rattled the window panes. Ow! He screamed. Don't do that! Let go! You'll take half the skin off my forehead! Matilda, nestled in her usual chair, was watching this performance over the rim of her book with some interest. What's the matter, Daddy? she said. Has your head suddenly swollen or something? The father glared at his daughter with deep suspicion, but said nothing. 
How could he? Mrs Wormwood said to him, it must be super glue. It couldn't be anything else. That'll teach you to be playing around with nasty stuff like that. I expect you were trying to stick another feather in your hat. I haven't touched the flaming stuff, Mr Wormwood shouted. He turned and looked again at Matilda, who looked back at him with large, brown, innocent eyes. Mrs Wormwood said to him, you should read the label on the tube before you start messing around with dangerous products. Always follow the instructions on the label. What in heaven's name are you talking about, you stupid witch? Mr Wormwood shouted, clutching the brim of his hat to stop anyone trying to pull it off again. Do you think I'm stupid? Do you think I glue this thing to my head on purpose? Matilda said, there's a boy down the road who got some super glue on his finger without knowing it, and then he put his finger into his nose. Mr Wormwood jumped. What happened to him? He spluttered. The finger got stuck inside his nose, Matilda said, and he had to go around like that for a week. People kept saying to him, stop picking your nose, and he couldn't do anything about it. He looked an awful fool. Serve him right, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Wormwood said. He shouldn't have put his finger up there in the first place. It's a nasty habit. If all children had super glue put on their fingers, they'd soon stop doing it. Matilda said, grown-ups do it too, mummy. I saw you doing it yesterday in the kitchen. That's quite enough from you, Mrs. Wormwood said, turning pink. Mr. Wormwood had to keep his hat on all through supper in front of the television. He looked ridiculous and he stayed very silent. When he went up to bed, he tried to get the thing off and so did his wife, but it wouldn't budge. Am I going to have my shower? He demanded. You'll just have to do without it, won't you? His wife told him. And later on, she watched her skinny little husband sulking around the bedroom in his purple striped pyjamas and pork pie hat on his head. She thought how stupid he looked. Hardly the kind of man a wife dreams about, she told herself. Again, what a wonderful drawing. Mr Wormwood discovered that the worst thing about having a permanent hat on your head was having to sleep in it. It was impossible to lie comfortably on the pillow. Now do stop fussing around, his wife told him after he'd been tossing and turning about for an hour. I expect it'll be loose by the morning and then it'll slip off easily. But it wasn't loose in the morning and it wouldn't slip off. So Mrs Wormwood took a pair of scissors and cut the thing off his head, bit by bit, first the top and then the brim. And where the inner band had got stuck to the hair all around the sides and back, she had to chop the hair off right to the skin, so that he finished up with a bald white ring around his head, like some sort of monk. And in the front, where the band had stuck directly to the bare skin, there remained a whole lot of small brown leathery stuff that no amount of washing would get off. It's quite the look. At breakfast, Matilda said to him, you must try to get those bits off your forehead, Daddy. It looks as though you've got little brown insects crawling all over you. People will think you've got lice. Be quiet, the father snapped. Just keep your nasty little mouth shut, will you? All in all, it was the most satisfactory exercise, but it was surely too much to hope that it had taught the father a permanent lesson. Now, obviously, I'm not encouraging you to exact any form of revenge on anyone at all. Um, but I think we could agree it's a funny little story. Um, anybody who hasn't read it before, as I said, um, please go and read it. It's so good. Um, and let me know whether you enjoyed it. So my choice today for World Book Day is Matilda by Roald Dahl. <laughs>